All right, guys, Boy 32 here checking it out. So we're sitting in the Freedom Office. Uh, got a message today from a gentleman named Jeff on Facebook. And it's absolutely wonderful that I actually saw the message because I normally don't ever go to Facebook or anything else like that. But Jeff, thank you very much for sending this to me. I greatly appreciate it because this is pretty important. Just wanted to let you know that yesterday, Delaware Senate passed two bills, SB3 and SB6, that affect firearm ownership in this state. Which is funny because you're so close to Pennsylvania, which is pretty much a free-loving state when it comes to the gun stuff. Because there's so many gun owners between Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. Except for the individual, the, the Republican, who wants to take that away from you. But he is from uh, the Philadelphia area. One bill, SB6, limits magazines to 17-round capacity. The other, to SB3, requires a handgun-qualified purchase card to buy, transfer a handgun. This bill also establishes a handgun purchase registry. Yeah, what it does is when you purchase a firearm, uh, it enables the police department or law enforcement to go ahead and track that purchase in an effort to, uh, you know, solve crime. Because, <laughs> you know, you and I are out there just gangbanging and doing whatever we got to do, right? <laughs> um, no grandfather clauses. Mandatory magazine forfeiture for $10 each. I have not, I have actually read, and we're going to go into this in a little bit, because what I like to do is when somebody sends me a message, I actually like to go in and make sure that everything's correct. Mandatory math, forfeiture of magazines, so long as there's a $15,000 forfeiture fund exists. Well, first of all, Mr. Uh, <laughs> State of Delaware, magazines are more expensive than $10. So there you go. These bills now go to the House for further consideration. That's what happens when the president is from your state. Politicians comply. Yes, they do. Okay, so let's talk about this in a little bit more detail. Uh, I will put the links to the bills down below so that you can go and read them. But what they do is they provide you with a synopsis of it. Let's talk about SB3. First of all, uh, this is the primary sponsor was Socola, uh, introduced on 325-21. Uh, it is going to the House. It was passed uh, yesterday, or today, actually, passed Senate today. Uh, this act creates the Delaware Large Capacity Magazine Prohibition Act of 2021. Oh, goodness, the scary magazines. They're just so terrifying. And it's interesting because I was reading the article uh, in one of the local uh, news organizations there, and they were talking about they had a survivor come in from uh, Las Vegas. It was saying that they just had a couple seconds. All right, the act includes clear definitions uh, for the term large capacity magazine as an ammunition feeding device with the capacity to accept more than 17 rounds. Now, in this case, they're saying 17. And they're going, we're just, we're being very generous. 17 rounds, should be, you should be able to defend yourself with that. <laughs> uh, after enactment, the possession of a large capacity magazine will be a Class B misdemeanor for a first offense and a class E felony for any subsequent offense. Those who possess a prohibited large capacity magazine when this act takes place in effect must by June 30th, 2022, relinquish the large capacity magazine to a law enforcement agency in the state. The act establishes a buyback program. I love the term buyback. They love that, man. It's just like, we're gonna take your tax money and take your property from you and give your money back to you. And that's what it is. Essentially, the act establishes a buyback program for large capacity magazines to be overseen by the Department of Safety and Homeland Security. Okay, so I, I'm not going to go over the entire thing, uh, but it's just, it's stupid. Uh, it passed by the Senate votes 13 to 8. All right, let's talk about SB6. Uh, this is a really cool one because, yes, it does create a, uh, a, a semblance of a, a registry system in there. They don't necessarily say it, but it is. This act does all the following. It creates an application process to obtain a handgun qualified purchaser card. Kind of like the uh, deal up there in, uh, what do you call it, Chicago or in Illinois. And ask them how great that's working out for them. Uh, got an email today. Guy's been sitting there waiting on his FOID card for over a year, Sanders, there's issues with your application. <laughs> it creates an application process to obtain a handgun qualified purchaser card to authorize the purchase of a handgun. While an applicant will incur costs related to the fingerprinting and required training, a fee will not be charged to obtain the permit. 
requires licensed importers, manufacturers, or dealers, as well as unlicensed persons to require an individual to present the individual's handgun qualified purchase card before selling or transferring a firearm to an individual. They're really vague on this because they're not saying an actual transfer but a person must present their card to an individual uh, prior to selling. So I don't know if there has to be a transfer or not. Requires that an applicant complete a firearms training course within five days before the date of the application, similar to what is required by Delaware <laughs> concealed carry permit law. Uh, an individual licensed to carry a concealed deadly weapon is exempt from this requirement as they must already complete a firearms training course to be licensed. Sends to law enforcement information that is already collected at the time of sale. So they're trying to say, well, this information is already collected. Uh, it's collected so that if in the event that weapon is stolen and used in a crime and they get it, they can trace it back. But the information is not voluntary to law enforcement. That's called a registration. And if law enforcement knows what you have and they decide that, you know, down the road, you don't deserve or earn that or need that firearm, they're going to come and get it. And that's where we're heading right now. I'm going to do a synopsis on what I think is getting ready to happen with this asshole in the White House. Whew. All right. Where, where am I? Sends to law enforcement information that is already collected. It's already collected. So why, why can't we just go ahead and, and, and take that information and put it in a data bank? required under federal law to be made available to law enforcement. It's bullshit. This change assists law enforcement in the criminal investigations they already conduct, which pretty much means that they consider anyone with a firearm as a potential criminal. They look at you and they look at me and, you know, you ever notice Jen Psaki? Yeah, they look at this and they look at that. And look at you as you are a criminal in the making because you have a firearm. And we need to know that you have that firearm. So when you do commit that crime, we know what firearm you have. <laughs> makes clear that 904IA of Title 24 is not intended to prohibit law enforcement officials from keeping records of sales or transfer of firearms for their use during a criminal investigation or prosecution. Because if you have a firearm, you are a potential criminal. And we're, look, we're keeping an eye on you. All right, this act also uh, makes technical corrections to conform existing law to the standards of the Delaware Legislative Drafting Manual, whatever the hell that means. So yeah, Jeff, I see uh, where uh, the buyback, I love it. They're going to take your money and give it back to you, but they're going to take your property away from you. It's bullshit. There's a law, in, there is, in the event that this passes, and yes, it passed, I got <laughs> Philly cheesesteak earlier, uh, 13 to 8, and um, if this passes and it goes to the House and they vote on it and it passes there and is signed into law by the uh, governor, I see lawsuits among us. GOA is on the ball. So anyway, that's what's going to happen. Uh, it's bullshit that they're trying to go ahead and form a registry. Uh, I don't understand why they have to have the 17 round deal. Why couldn't they just do a 20 round magazine? Because that is a, another standard capacity magazine that could be used in an AR. Now you're just kind of screwing the pooch for everyone. But to make it a, a felony charge uh, for any uh, violations after the first one is absolute BS. Uh, and $10 per magazine. That's another BS move there. You guys let me know what your thoughts are down below. Delaware, the home of uh, 46. Man, and uh, I guess that's where he goes on the weekends because he just can't handle the stress of being in the White House for more than a couple hours, you know, with his crippled little body and all. But with that being said, I always end them like this. Uh, God bless the men and women in uniform who are going to... Uh, Stand by our Constitution as it was written by our founding fathers and not this bullshit that's over here in Delaware. It's absolutely crazy. I don't know what the, the makeup of the House side of Delaware is. It should be interesting to see what happens in the future. But yeah, a major uh, lawsuit is probably going to go on uh, <laughs> on the books after this thing. So uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And that's it. I appreciate your time. KB32. I'm out of here. Y'all be good, sir, for the record.